Hello and welcome to MIP TV and with me as always is the book reviewer uh, Oh Splendid with the <laughs> Bob Cook and uh, Bob is, Bob is we, we're going in a different direction in book reviews this, this, this year aren't we Bob? We're, we're yeah. moving away from TA to, to just general books and you've got a cracking one here haven't you? Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about the title? Yeah the title is Making the Most of Counselling and Psychotherapy placements oh so i'm i'm gonna and this is by michelle oldale and michelle j cook no no connection to you bob oh no no it is c-o-o-k-e <laughs> yes that's true Cam, yes no uh, no connections i just i just um bought this book actually a couple of weeks ago because uh you know at our institute we train you know psychotherapists of course for a long time and one of the things they have to do as you well know from your counseling days they have to do a hundred hour placement and it's probably one of the most anxious time yeah, yeah. for students preparing for placements and of course at our institute they have to uh, pass a pass first uh, a clinical competencies exam yes so not only are they actually very um, anxious because they have to do role playing as therapists to pass this exam but then, of course, they have to prepare for placements and actually go for interview with placements. Yeah. So it's, um, it's a real anxious time. And this book, 2015, 2016, uh, really, I liked it because it's really good for students who are preparing for placements, not just in understanding um, what makes up the preparation for placement interviews. And actually, when they start, they're really there. I think uh, road, their clinical road, if you like, their work experience uh, on the vocational training at the placements. Um, but uh, they have to prepare, and this book is a very good start for that. Yeah, I mean, it's one, it's one of those things that students, my experience is that students worry about a lot. Um, mm. And um, also, you know, I, I think that for me, the title, Making the Most of It, because it's a you know, for those who have placements, it's a really, really enriching experience if someone makes the most of it, Bob. And, and I wonder what, what this book kind of highlights. Uh, it really highlights, first of all, what a placement is in terms right. of work experience and the importance of this in starting a clinical journey. It talks about preparing yourself, not just preparing yourself in terms of clinical competency, but preparing yourself in terms of ethics, in terms of understanding the ethics of um, the dilemmas, the sort of ethical dilemmas you might come across as a beginning therapist. Yeah, for sure. It talk, talks about preparing you in terms of the effectiveness of supervision, mm -hmm. how important that is. And it talks about preparing you in terms of your own personal development. Yeah, yeah. So it talks about preparing you in three elements first. You yeah. Know, not just, you know, your supervision, your ethics, and your clinical side. And also, that I very much like, mm. because it's preparing you with three fundamental tenets first. Yeah, yeah, I always, I always think that that's something that should, um, should be part of good training anyway. You know, mm. the, you, you talk about clinical competencies, when I trained, yeah. Yeah. when I used to train yeah. therapist, we would, we would have fitness to practice, which is the same, same, same thing. thing. And you know that would encompass an, a, a really ob, an observed recording. Maybe right. they gave some feedback on it, um, mm. and also a general a general consensus with the teaching team about do they really understand aspects such as the law? Um, mm. Do they understand about the ethical framework boundaries? Yeah, you know, and, and also the use of supervision and the ratios of it, which are yeah one to eight, I think. Yeah, yeah, and one to six. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and in our institute, they have to actually um, be evaluated doing therapy for 20 minutes, and then they have different competencies they have to reach, um, which is pretty uh, anxiety provoking. Yes. Then, of course, they need to understand that they have to use supervision effectively, they have to prepare themselves at a personal development level, and, to have to, and they have to think ethically. Mm. Yeah, all well, personal development is is all you know. Again, it's that comes down, I think, to the teaching and things like attachment, understanding mm. your own attachment style, understanding your own history, mm. Mm. Um, and 
the own history. Yeah. yeah. And of course, the other side of this book, which I really like, it helps you prepare and understand um, uh, interviews. In other words, nowadays, and you'll know this very well yourself, it, it's not so easy to get placements. No, no. You know, I mean, currently, Bob and myself are in the UK, so if we, for the international audience, um, I don't know if placements are a, um element of other training providers yeah, in other yeah, parts yeah. of the world, but in, in certainly in the UK, and I know to some extent in, in America, um, you get kind of like an apprenticeship where you, you, you go and you work and you understand the, the placement. And then, you know, if you, once you qualify for any jobs, then, you know, you, you may have, a, you may be, have a bit of a head start perhaps if, if they know you, you know, you may or you may not, <laughs> depending on the recruitment policy. Yeah, well, in the UK, of course, um, the in, I, I think placements are quite, are quite sparse because you've got so many counsellors coming through programmes as well as psychotherapists. Yeah, yes. Yes. So it really does help if you've got a sort of, uh, when you go to the interview, you've got a competency certificate behind you. Mm. And you can talk about um, how much personal development you've done. Yes. You, could, you can address ethical dilemmas. These are the sort of things that interviews, they uh, will get gold stars for. Yeah, absolutely. I've sat on a few placement interviews. When I, right. Yeah, when I, yeah, I, I uh, was chair and director of Thameside and Lost at Mind. Um, oh, oh. For for about four years, you know, it was a it was a pro bono position. I, I did it because the organisation was and still <clears> is a fantastic organisation in in my local area, and I felt it was the right thing to do. And I was you know flattered for being asked. And I've sat on interview panels, and and yeah, you know, okay. without giving too much away, you usually get one person asking about personal development, and one person asking about an ethical dilemma, yeah, and definitely. and and someone maybe asking about application of theory or supervision. You know, and usually a group interview as well, sometimes a group interview. Oh, fantastic. And the other thing I like about this book particularly, it talks about the accountability of training providers like ourselves mm. um, in terms of reports um, from, the, uh, from the actual student themselves midway through their clinical placement uh, in terms of judging how they're getting on. Mm. Uh, it talks about, um, uh, well, especially again at our institute, but also in the book, about how the training pro provider needs to contact and be in touch with the actual um, train. The training and the placement provider need to be in tandem mm. in, in giving the best feedback because this is really at the beginning of the clinical journey for the student. Uh, so in terms of work experience, it's a wonderful time in terms of networking. Maybe even they'll go back to that placement to get a job after qualification. So it is a real rich vein uh, period for the uh, for the trainee and the more they can learn at these stages uh, the more, more they make for a competent uh, therapist of course absolutely any bits of the book that really stand out for you uh, really wow moments you've read it and you thought oh wow that's going to be so useful for someone how, interestingly enough how to prepare for the interview itself yes even from and this is, stands a bit, uh, I don't know what it sounds really, uh, making sure you're smartly dressed, for example. Yes. Uh, no, you know, your, behavioral, <laughs> your behavioral sense, if you like. Yes. Uh, um, like, you're not on the, you know, I remember a time, and this is a little, my, my father saying to me a long, long time ago, um, you know, and I went for a job on, uh, on the radio, and, it, you know, I could hear my father's voice saying, uh, Make sure your shoes are clean, which is a bit ridiculous on the radio. But, um, you know, in interviews for the yeah, radio, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, yeah. But no, no, things like uh, present well, uh, you know, be articulate, yes. how to ground yourself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, another bit I liked uh, in the book particularly was how to use supervision. And, and I, I like the idea that they were talking about have supervision, have some supervision sessions before you actually see your client absolutely i mean and that, many people forget that well i mean it, yeah i mean it's it's absolutely essential you know i think people forget i think students sometimes forget i mean to be fair to them there's so much to learn it's a for some people it's a completely new canvas um, mm -hmm. The fact that if you go into practice without a supervisor, you're technically, well, you're not technically, you are unethical because you're yeah. not supervised. 
that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm phoning the supervisor up and saying, can I see you? Doesn't constitute having a supervisor, <laughs> you know. No. And, no. Um, you know, I, I mean, I've written extensively on this and I've lectured extensively on it. And, um, you know, you have to go and see a supervisor. And a good supervisor should... You know, I think I think the opening gamut should be, you know, tell me about, you know, your values in counselling. Tell me a little bit about what's going on for you to get a real sense of the supervisee. Um, you know, and, and also, you know, not not to put too fine a point on it, to make it really clear it's an apprenticeship, that this is, you know, that, that work experience. it's work experience. Yeah, yeah. And it's, a, it's such a valuable, valuable time. And... And the other thing I like in this book particularly, I said a bit earlier on, alluded to this, but the emphasis on your own personal development mm. and the emphasis on why you wanted to be a psychotherapist in the first time, first post. Yeah, because yeah. This is the first time, usually to, uh, you know, in the second year or maybe in the third year, that you switch from clinical theory, learning about didactic training, and you're starting your clinical journey. So why did you... What brought you into this clinical journey in the first place? Mm -hmm. and, and, and the book talks a lot about that, um, the training provider actually, um, well, there's exercises in this book, which is going to tease out, you know, what was the motivation? What brought you here? Because if you haven't got that inner passion, when you start your clinical journey, yeah. You see, so it, it, it's good the book touches on that. Yeah, and I also think there's something about finding a, a fit for you. Yeah. Your, yeah. You know, you know I, I know it's difficult because some, you know, I've known some students in the past who've, you know, basically said, I, just, I, I'm just, I have to find a placement and I have to enter a placement where I wouldn't perhaps normally go, but there's nothing else. It, it is very, very tricky. But yeah. if you have a choice... You know what I'd say is is find something that's really close to you. Be oh, that's a good tip. Yeah, yeah, so something that's that meaningful. Stuff. Yeah, because yeah. because you know when the going gets tough and it does get tough. I mean, mm. like, make no mistake. You mm. know, if you've got that guiding light and that inner inner fire, um, mm. which is your your passion for the work, mm. um, that will that will carry you through. Yeah, definitely. So this book provides all all those things from a definition of what a placement the philosophy, the values, the ethics uh, of the guardian principles of young trainees to preparing people for interviews, uh, how to use effective supervision, what happens after the placement, um, all those. Uh, it's a very practical book. Yeah, it is. And it sounds, it sounds like an essential read um, mm -hmm. for, for any student of counsel and psychotherapy. And maybe I'm sure those qualified colleagues, those teaching colleagues who are listening, who may have a book budget, <laughs> if, there, if, if, if there's any such things left now at universities and college, maybe it may be useful to get a couple of copies. As usual, Bob and myself, we don't get paid um, for promoting these books. Bob talks about his love of books just purely for the love of it and sharing his passion for literature. Right. And we're going to put um, a link in the a link below in the comments bar so you can click on and inspect the book. And we'll put a picture at the end so you know what the book looks like. So, Making the Most of Counselling and Psychotherapy Placements by Michelle O'Dell and Michelle Cook. Um, yeah. Sounds like a must-have for, um, any, so. yeah, for anybody who's, um, you know, anybody yeah. who's starting off in their clinical journey. Yeah. Yeah. So, Bob Cook, as always, thank you very much. Thank you, Roy.